We are just midway through 2015 and we already have a 2016 product. Hello everyone, this is Leo and today we'll be testing Kaspersky Internet Security. After a very quick and easy install process, this is the first thing that you'll see. The Kaspersky Internet Security GUI, although the user interface is a subjective thing, it depends from person to person whether you like it or not. Personally, I do like the Kaspersky user interface. It's, it's really nice, it's well laid out, and I like the color scheme too. The greens and whites look pretty decent. Now. I can understand this being a little bit difficult for novice users. It's probably a great user interface for advanced users because they have a lot of settings and things that you can mess with. And it really gives you a lot of information, sometimes much more than what is required. And that can be confusing to someone who is not so experienced with computers. But for people like me, I really like the user interface. So as you can see, we have got plenty of tools over here. We've got privacy protection, trusted applications mode, which is a nice highlight of this version. This allows you to put your computer in kind of a lockdown mode where it basically only runs trusted applications and does not run any application that is untrusted. So it doesn't put it in the sandbox. It just doesn't run anything that is not a trusted application. And we've got our fancy stuff like the on-screen keyboard, vulnerability scan, stuff like that. Now in the settings, it's very interesting. We have uh, our usual stuff. And we have some new things like the uh, system changes control, which is kind of like a HIPS module. It protects the operating system from unauthorized modifications. I'm going to turn this on, although it comes off by default. And we are going to make a few changes to the settings. Now in file antivirus, I have changed the action to delete instead of disinfect. And it's easy to understand why. We don't want our test to become very confusing. So I decided to set everything to delete, this and the scan. Now, by default, it does a heuristic analysis and a light scan. It has really nice settings over here. If You can mess with those if you like. And... Uh, it has a network attack blocker and application control. This is another region where I've changed some settings. Now, one of my subscribers reported to me that if you turn this trust digitally signed applications and load rules for applications from the KSN, what it does sometimes is when you have bundleware and adware and stuff like that, they might get allowed. So to avoid that, I'll be turning both of these settings off for this test. So let's see what Kaspersky can do at its best. And performance, I've changed another setting here. We're not conceding resources to the operating system so that Kaspersky loads up first. And once again, in scan, I have changed the action to delete instead of disinfect or select action automatically. But of course, if you're a regular user, you probably want to stick with the defaults. So let's get started with the test. Uh, before that, the performance. Kaspersky has had a pretty bad re reputation for taking up resources, but what I've noticed is it has gotten better over the years, and with this version, it seems to be kind of at the peak at the moment. It's really light. It doesn't seem to be affecting the system at all and the update size was very small this time unlike other versions it was just about 20 megabytes. So now let's get started with the link test. Here we have some malicious URLs that are fairly new so let's try them out and see how Kaspersky reacts to these threats. Kaspersky is probably one of the most popular paid anti-malware programs along with Bitdefender, so you would expect them to have pretty good signatures since they have such a big user base. So far we've got 1.18 megabytes downloaded. Seems like it's a big file, so I'll move on to the next one. Might get that to run faster. Alright, the second URL appears to be blocked. The first one is still downloading. Let's try out the third one.
and once again it looks like the URL is blocked by the web antivirus so that is good news Kaspersky has blocked a couple another one so the web antivirus doing a good job here let's continue some of these were detected by the cloud this one is not detected so let's go ahead and run this and this one is caught by their file antivirus so something or the other so far has blocked everything the first one's still downloading by the way don't know how big that is if it's way too big I'll just cancel it let's try running this one alright looks like the first one is ready to run so let's do that seems like Kaspersky has blocked a web page and it's blocking some links so it appears that uh, this one was caught go ahead and close that out and it looks like it has detected something malicious there you go so the program that was allowed to run Kaspersky probably detected the malicious payload of that application so that was a block too so far so good let's try and open this fake WinRAR crap hmm well we're not going to be able to run this because of the weird extension but let's try to save it this time Kaspersky might block it once we change the extension so we're just going to go into downloads and rename it to executable now let's try running it alright seems to be running fine it seems like WinRAR installer in some other language so that might have been a false positive so let's proceed try running this one and now the last link which was blocked by their web antivirus so Kaspersky did a fairly good job uh, the WinRAR thing did run and we had this one the first link it actually successfully executed but then Kaspersky blocked the malicious payload so I'm going to reboot the system what I suspect is nothing went through but nevertheless I'll do a scan with Hitman Pro and we'll see if anything managed to get past Kaspersky's defenses Hitman Pro didn't find any threats so I went ahead and grabbed the samples after disabling Kaspersky so let's go ahead and do the detection ratio test we have let me just show you 600 items let's see how many Kaspersky can remove and yes I have set the action to delete so we're not going to have any issues while counting the number of files left over the Kaspersky scan is now complete it probably took the actions as well as uh, did the scan so it took quite a while but that was both scan and removal but we still have two items that we couldn't get rid of so I'll just hit resolve I'm going to delete this delete that as well so we should be good to go now let's see what kind of detection ratio that gives us alright we still have 244 items so not a spectacular detection ratio but then again I did use quite a bit of uh, low detection sample so we'll see how it protects us when it comes to the zero day test 
So 59%, actually it's it's not as bad as it sounds considering the age of the samples, but it's still kind of like average or something like that. It's, it's definitely not the best I have seen higher detections even with these samples. So let's get started here. We are going to run these files and we'll see if Kaspersky can protect us. We have everything turned on as you can see. This is the important part. Let's see if our system gets compromised. So far, I'm not seeing any alerts from Kaspersky. And that's just because of the way their zero day protection works. They don't really have uh, a very, you know, user dependent system. So most of the time, it's just going to be automatic. You can probably take a look at their application control. As you can see, we have 17 restricted applications and one that was untrusted. So let us proceed and see if Kaspersky's sandbox system or restriction system protects us from all these threats. Although I haven't seen any alerts from Kaspersky, we are also not seeing any kind of malicious behavior, so that is good news. Kaspersky is finding some more threats and is automatically getting rid of them. It wants me to reboot the computer to disinfect this threat, but I'm going to do that after I run a few more because I don't I can't afford to restart like 20 times. This is kind of like a behavior blocker alert. As you can see, application is performing dangerous activity characteristic of malware. So that's, that's nice to see. So I'll go ahead and restart the computer now and we'll see how Kaspersky performs and how it is able to deal with these threats. There you go, malware actions rolled back. So it is getting rid of a lot of these threats. A lot of them going into the restricted zone and a lot of these things getting rolled back. So that is nice. And now it's doing the advanced disinfection. We'll reboot the computer and then we'll run a few more files and then we'll see how Kaspersky performs. But as you can see, it got rid of a lot of those adware thingies that were installed. Now Kaspersky wants us to run the uh, Windows Diagnostic Tool or the Troubleshooting Wizard that is basically going to fix any problems caused by the malware. And these are the settings it recommends us to change. We'll do that. And it wants us to reboot the computer again, but we're going to run a few more threats this time, and then we'll finally do our last reboot. And after that, we'll be doing our second opinion scans to see how Kaspersky fared. Alright, once again, suspicious behavior detected, so I'm going to close and remove the application. Once again, we're getting the disinfect and restart notification, so I'm just going to run a couple more and then we'll finally do our last reboot and we'll see if Kaspersky has managed to keep a clean sheet or at least kept most of the malware out. I 
guess that'll be that. Now I'm going to disinfect and restart, and we'll be back with the second opinion scan results. Malwarebytes and Hitman Pro have detected some things, but they're more trash than threat. We have a PUP optional. It's it's not exactly a active PUP. It's just a leftover thing. And same here with Hitman Pro. It's just a bunch of registry keys that probably weren't removed when Kaspersky got rid of the adware. So not really a big deal, but I still wouldn't call it a clean sheet. So, do I recommend this program? Well, pretty much yes, as long as you use it the way I have. So, we did see some pretty solid zero-day protection in this test, and uh, that could have been, in mo for the most part, bolstered by the settings change that I did at the start with KSN. That is, we had disabled these two options. Now if you have these enabled, it is possible that a few more adware things or stuff might have got themselves installed. So, well, if you are planning on using Kaspersky Internet Security, you should probably use the settings that I have used over here. So that is it for this review. This version of Kaspersky performed pretty well and is going to be one of my recommended products for the year. Let's see how the other AV companies do. So if you want to keep up to date with security news and product reviews, check out my other videos. Stay informed, stay secure.